everybody, final thoughts time for Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu, which is actually a very, very cool game. I mean, I, how could it not be? It is taking the, you know, the raw bones of Pandemic, which is an absolutely phenomenal design that is, you know, stood the test of time and, you know, continues to enthrall people around the world. It's one of the most popular board games there is at the moment. So, taking one of the most popular board games there is on the market and applying one of the most popular themes uh, how can that not be a winner? And this is. This is a delightful game. It's a lot of fun. And I'm very, very impressed by all the new features it adds to the game. You know, the notion of your hero characters who can change over time from effectively taking damage is a really, really cool idea. I'd love to see something like that in re regular Pandemic. Um, and, you know, the notion that as you, as you take more and more hits, more and more evil gods come out that fundamentally change some of the rules of the game is a brilliant idea. It's kind of similar to some of the stuff you've seen in some of the expansions for Antemic, but it's still a very, very cool new way to do it. And, um, you know, I, I, I certainly understand why they kind of simplified and streamlined a little bit with only having one type of infection, i.e. the cultists, instead of having four different colors like the original game. That's totally cool. I don't really think the game suffers for that. And, you know, the notion of replacing explosions, you know, you know, that, you know kind of Again, simplifying the game a little bit, streamlining it, so you don't get situations where, oh, a third one and then a fourth one means that you, you know, have outbreaks that spread from space to space. While that is a big, big part of what makes Pandemic so cool, I don't really feel that the game suffers too much for not having that. Because instead, you know, I mean, thematically it makes sense that, you know, once this fourth guy shows up, oh, they sacrifice him in an in a evil ritual and that makes another bad guy come that changes the rules of the game. So all that stuff works really nicely. I, mean, I love the thematic elements and what they've brought in. I also really am surprised how much I enjoyed the much more intimate Feel. This is not all about jet setting and globe trotting all around the world. This is just four little American towns in the 1920s, just barely held together. And I mean, you spend a fair deal of time literally just walking from place to place. I I really kind of like the you know the you know it, again it kind of helps in accentuate the creepiness and um, the claustrophobia that this theme is supposed to evoke. So all that stuff works really nicely. Um, you know, some people might not be a big fan of the die, but for me and Jen, it worked pretty well. I mean, you just kind of have to assume that when you're doing dangerous things like traveling through a gate or using a relic. But yeah, it's going to drive you insane. And on average, you just have to assume it's going to be one. Sometimes it'll be two, sometimes it'll be none. But, um, you know, I, I, again, I think considering the uh, theme that has been layered on here and how, you know, Cthulhu is typified by Arkham Horror and Eldritch Horror and so many other games as being a very dice-heavy game with a lot of random luck to draw, I think it's very, very appropriate to have brought this in here. And Jen, I found... You know, it worked really nicely and um, didn't really upset. It, you know, it's not like this is particularly swingy or anything like that. I mean, you just have to kind of assume on average you're going to get a single hit. Sometimes you won't get any, sometimes you'll get two, but it averages out over the course of the game. So, I mean, you know, oh, and then also actually having enemies that move around. They follow very simple rules, but that are actually traveling from one place to another, and you have to take that into account. That was really nice as well. So there's so many really cool ideas. And I would love to see several of these ideas make it back into a regular pandemic in some future. Um, so anyway, Jen and I, we've definitely enjoyed it. The characters, the miniatures, the, the atmosphere, all of it works nicely. I mean, actually, Jen found herself enjoying the atmosphere, even though she's not particularly a big fan of eldritch horror-type settings. But here, it all worked quite nicely. Now, I will say, for me and Jen, I don't think this necessarily replaces Pandemic for us, because, um, you know, I talked about several of the things that they did to streamline the game and all that, but there's one big th change that, again makes the game smoother, makes it easier to play, easier to pick up. I think uh, it turns Pandemic into even more of a gateway game than it used to be. It is the notion that the map has been simplified. Uh, you know, there, obviously there are fewer places to go, fair enough, but that um, you no longer have cards for every single location in the world, and you have to spend a good deal of your time dealing with the logistics of, oh no, um, I want to give you, I have a hospital card? I've got to meet you at the hospital. No, 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 no. I've just got a blue card so I can meet you anywhere at Innsmouth to go there. Oh, I've got a blue card. It means I can travel anywhere into Innsmouth, not just one particular city. So travel in this game becomes 
much simpler. It is, or it's less of a puzzle to solve. You can get around very easily, and collecting those groupings of cards you need to shut down gates, or you know, in regular pandemic cure diseases. Like I said, it just becomes a much less, um, uh, you know, logistically challenging problem to solve. It's less puzzly. And now, I think for some people that's going to be a huge boost. It's going to be a huge benefit. It makes the game more attractive. It makes it easier for anybody to pick up and play. But for me and Jen, it, you know, the game becomes, compared to regular Pandemic, a little bit too light. I'm not going to say simple, because it's actually it's interesting. I mean, the game actually introduces several new things you have to keep track of. If anything, the game becomes a little bit more um, Ameritrashy now, because there's a lot of extra rules you have to remember. Hey, don't forget when you use a relic that you got to roll the die. Don't forget that when you go insane, you uh, actually lose one of your actions every turn. Um, which, by the way, I totally forgot to do in the run-through. I mean, for people who actually went all the way through and watched my extended playthrough, and it looked like I had a pretty easy time of it, don't be fooled. I mean, that was just goofs. I mean, I was making goof. I forgot that I have one less action when I um, when I'm insane. I think a couple of times I forgot to draw, you know, summoning cards at the end of a turn when I should have. So, you know, I made the game a bit easier on myself than I should. But still, hopefully, in spite of that, you have a pretty good idea of what the game feels like to play. But bear in mind, it is more challenging than I just demonstrated. But even still. You know, it's interesting. There's there's a bit more complexity to the game because there's more things to remember. And it really kind of bugs me. Why don't they just remind you here? I mean, well, they do. They, they say, hey, you know, there's this four. You have four actions. And once you go insane, you have three actions. I would have much rather they just put down in the text, player only has three actions now. They do that for one character, actually, but they don't for the rest. So it's one of those things that unless you remember, hey, remember this number up here, which on the insane card gets kind of a little bit almost invisible, it, that's an easy thing to forget. It's an easy thing when you play a relic card and you really are focusing on, right, okay, how are we going to use this relic card? What, what, what's the impact of it? It's easy. Oh, don't forget, you have to roll the insanity die. Um, it would be really nice if there was a reminder on the relic cards saying, you know, just a picture of the die to remind you, roll the thing. I'm mean, just a few little things like that kind of bug me. Um, you know, I mean, because it's interesting. There are more distinct rules to remember with all those little extra little bits, which again, I don't begrudge them. I think they're actually an appropriate addition considering the theme that is being layered onto Pandemic. I mean, the game's becoming a little bit less euro a little bit more Ameritrashy. That's cool. It works well. I just would have liked to see a little bit more in the way... I mean, um, the player aid. Um, you know, there's still room here. They could have actually reminded you, don't forget the special rule for if you close a gate if you're insane. There's those extra steps you have to take. It doesn't remind you of that here. There's just a few little things like that, but it's fine. You play the game a few times, it's going to become second nature, and it's only going to be a problem if, like me and Jen, you're hardcore pandemic fans, and you just, you're not used to having to pay a penalty for playing an event card or a, uh, a relic card. So, It'd be nice to have little reminders of that, but it's, it's fine. It's a minor complaint. And this is not a complaint. I'm just, it's more of an explanation for why, um, you know, while the game itself got a bit more complex with these extra rules, the logistical puzzle of the game got simpler because now, um, you know, you just have blue cards instead of specific location cards. So it's easier to get around. It's easier to meet up with other players. It's easier to share cards. And... Um, and, and, you know, but of course, they've increased the difficulty in other places that, you know, the more um, bad hits you take, the tougher the game gets. You know, as you start closing gates, that limits your ability to maneuver around in the world. That's certainly not something in regular pandemic that happens. In regular pandemic, uh, as you cure more uh, diseases, things get easier for you. Here, they get a little bit tougher, um, you know, uh, specifically. So, I mean, on the whole, I think it all balances out. Um, but for me and Jen, we like the crunchier puzzle, the tougher puzzle, the puzzle that I know makes a lot of people hate Pandemic. A lot of people just find Pandemic a bit too burdensome and choresome to actually have to, you know, worry and do all the really intricate planning to be in the right place at the right time. Here, the game is a bit looser. It's a bit more easygoing in that regard. And they just add different challenges to push it on you. I think Jen and I prefer the original, but I could certainly see why for a lot of people, even people who hate Pandemic, there's a lot of people out there who don't like it. You might want to consider this. Now, I'm not saying if you don't like Pandemic that this is a slam dunk and you'll like it. It really depends why you don't like Pandemic. But if the reason you didn't like Pandemic, like I said, for a lot of people, is you just found it to be too dry and puzzly, you might want to check this out because this definitely addresses that. This is less puzzly. It's certainly much more atmospheric and much less dry and a really clever design. I mean, it, it comes together quite nicely. What was his name? Uh, Chuck Yeager. 
uh, who has actually designed another Cthulhu themed game before this. So it made sense that if he was going to work on a pandemic retheming, that he would bring Cthulhu to it. He did a nice job. I love the new elements. I love the new additions to the core formula. And the formula still works beautifully. And that, folks, is pandemic. Reign of Cthulhu. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, please let me know. Apologies for the goofs I made here and there. Like I said, forgetting to draw and whatnot. As always, watch with Paulo's annotations turned on or check the show notes um, and you can see where I made it things a little bit easier on myself than I should have. But even still, hopefully at the end of this run through, you have a pretty good idea of what the game feels like to play and you can decide whether it's right for you and yours. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Questions, comments, concerns, as always, please let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.